Good morning. I'm Lynn, and this is Arnie. And you welcome to Utopia Farms. Oh, look, hon, the raven. Oh, we almost got uh, attacked by a raven there. Something went on. We didn't get attacked by him, but he came to the gate here and landed on the gate and looked inside as we were talking. So today as we go through our daily routines, we'll see some spoilt sheep. We'll save a trapped ewe. We'll talk about prey behavior in sheep. We'll talk about aggressive rams. And we'll talk about urinary calculi. And we have some equipment repairs. Anyway. Let's get started. Here's the hungry faces. Aren't they cute? First we'll feed the main barn. Ben, stay away. Don't threaten them. Everybody's lined up and quiet, the way we like it. We've got the peanut gallery over here. Hi, Glad. So everyone in the main barn's fed. Everyone's looking healthy. Waters are clean. We're gonna go head over to the coveralls. Hey, okay, we're in the Dorset barn right now, doing morning chores. Moms are all getting their grain. Did you miss your bottle? That other guy's drinking it. Here's Stinky. We did check into Stinky's pedigree and she is a registered Dorset. She's from our Ram Gimli and her mother is registered. We bought her at the Classic one year and her mother's had lambs before and never did rear nursing. So it's totally a way of nursing by choice on uh, Stinky's part. And the, like they all get green at the feeder too. You see Arnie pours it out. But the reason she's liking this be is because for the same reason that lambs go into the creep area. Um, there's no pressure from the other ewes, so you can eat it all in private and... <coughs> Hi! What about, uh... Oh, you're really t teasing her, Riney. <coughs> oh, now here comes Chewy that everybody likes you to feed her. <laughs> we'll get some for Chewy. We'll see if we can lure Chewy over. Look at how big Seymour's grown. That's Seymour in the front there. You have to call her so you don't scare her. Chewy! Chewy. This is how you create spoiled sheep. Hi, Chewy. And that's Cupcake Wither, you see? That's her lamb wither behind her.
There, maybe Cupcake wants some. <laughs> Chewy probably won't share with Cupcake. Oh, here comes the other one. Now it's a fight. <laughs> that was a packing order. Oh, Chewy's right behind you. Yeah, you can't let the group see you do it because if you do, it's then it quickly turns into a mobbing. 57 looks like she needs some. See those Texel crosses? See, this is a Rito cross. The other one's a Texel cross. And you can see the difference in the body build. I don't know if you can tell from here, but those Texels are a much wider oh, breed. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That doesn't work. Hi, you look really nice. And looking at these ears, you know that we're trying to get fluffy ears, or at least hair covered. And just looking quickly at these lambs, I see that uh, I'm, we're well on our way to getting the ears that we prefer. Even this little tiny one has woolly ears. Hi, you don't get any more. You've had enough. So one of the bars on our feeder, you have to be careful when you put these slanted bars on at the, the very last bar in the feeder. Um, basically, we've started putting an extra one in there so they can't get their heads in. But uh, Arnie forgot to do this one, and this U has got her head stuck in here. Which is fine if you're around and you can help her get out. But uh, if they're in there like overnight and they get tired and they go to lay down because they can't stand there anymore, um, at that point they can actually hang themselves. All they gotta do is put their head down. I know, but when you're trapped, the instinct is to put your head up. The wide part is at the bottom. There she goes. <laughs> Yeah, and you see what we uh, what he has to do. You get his head in here, but once he moves it up, he can't you can't bring it down. It and so what the solution is is like he did over here. You just fill in those little gaps at, um, where the feeders end and start. You have to put that extra one in there. So um, he was talking about cutting it out, but probably the better solution is just to put in another bar. So we were lucky that that you got stuck in the feeder because it's uh, another learning moment, I suppose. Um, we were lucky with that you because she was actually crying, um, making buying noises like that when everybody else was quiet at the feeders. And at a quick glance, you would have just thought that she was eating like everybody else because her head was in the feeder like everyone else. But um, the bang alerted us to a problem and when we checked, sure enough, she was stuck. But oftentimes that doesn't happen with sheep. Um, we've mentioned it before that uh, sheep are flock animals and they're also prey animals. So that's where they are on the food chain, which is the bottom of the line. But in order to protect themselves from predators, sheep generally are really, really quiet when they're in distress or um, if they're sick. Because, like, say she was in the fence in the field and crying like that, um, that would quickly alert a predator, like a coyote, that something was going on and when he checked it out, he'd find her there just ready for the kill, right? So um, in general, they're very, very quiet when they're in trouble. Same with when they're uh, sick, not feeling well. You may think everybody's um, all right. They're all, they all seem to be standing at the feeder, but you'll see one that's standing at the feeder and not chewing or, or rooting through the hay and stuff or the sheep will be out at pasture and everyone's got their head down eating, 
but on closer inspection you'll see that one has her head down and is walking with her head down following and mimicking the group but she's not actually chewing off the grass and eating. That's also um, an adaptive behavior um, to protect them from predators. They're behaving as if everything's okay. They're no different from all the others. They're not a target for killing. Um, so they're, they're, um, they're hiding. They're pretending to be eating. They're be pretending to be okay. So that's why when you do go in and check your sheep each day, um, usually them coming up to the feeder is a real um, indicator that everything is okay. If there's one hanging back, standing there looking droopy, you can guarantee something's wrong with that one. But uh, there are those ones who will just go to the feeder and stand there and not eat. You gotta look for those because uh, they're harder to spot. Um, so, you know, when you, when you think you're just sitting there wasting time, it, it's actually not a waste of time. Look at everybody, get to know your sheep, how they behave. Um, and you'll, you'll pick these things out because sometimes it's really, really not evident. So Jethro is one of our own bred rams. He's actually usually an extremely friendly ram. He's in a breeding group and when you go in his breeding group, you really, really, really have to watch him because he does want to come charge you. Um, when he's not in breeding groups, he's not like this at all. But um, the ram you know outside of a breeding group may not necessarily be the same ram once he's in with girls and his hormones are raging. So um, this is the only pen that I really watch my back because uh, he's a really big ram. He's on guard. He's defending his girls. Jethro. Sometimes just startling them as they come at you uh, is enough to turn them away or stop them in their tracks. If they've if they've hit you, you can um, push back at them with a slap on to the head. But more times than not, that's just going to encourage them um, to take you on. So distraction is probably a much better solution. And sheep are easily distracted. But you see how he kind of arches his head up a little bit and does a little prance? That's uh, his stance kind of saying, I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm gonna take you on, so. We're in the final barn of the morning. The rams, they're always the exuberant group that comes to greet us in the morning. All wanting hugs, hard to videotape when you're being surrounded by rams like that. The rams seem to be a lot quieter these days, not nearly so much fighting. And I'm not seeing a um, killer humping on anybody anymore either, so maybe he's got that out of his system now too. So no, no signs of blood on any of the rams' behinds, and no sign of blood on killer either. So um, hopefully uh, his... Uh, He's healed up a little bit now from those stones and hopefully that's the last problems we'll ever have with him and that, the urinary stones. Uh, it tends to come back, I've found in my past. If they get it once, they tend to get it again. But he did pass him by himself and we are now trying the, the limestone to see if that uh, helps the situation and if it does my question would be why don't people have that as common common knowledge to sheep breeders that limestone will prevent stones because I talked to so many people and they've lost rams for that reason 
And I mean, me too. I've I've had sheep for 22 years, and I've had veterinarians come in and and treat them for it and everything, and no one has ever suggested to me to use that. Um, I got that information online from uh, Lanessa Farms, actually. They have a YouTube channel as well. And, you know, um, you don't like to lose rams, especially that way. It's very painful. It's a terrible way to, to die. So um, we figured we'd give it a, a shot. And I'm hoping that this time next year I can report back and say that we didn't lose a single ram to it. That's why um, YouTube nowadays I think can be a really good tool for people because I find most people if they are trying to get information or they want uh, to know how to do something, the go-to is starting to become YouTube. And yeah, you can get mis uh, misleading information on any channel or, but I mean, you can get misleading information from people in real life, like that you meet and talk to as well. So you always have to weigh what's said. But in general, um, YouTube is a great source of information uh, for advice and tips uh, and what works for people. Because like I say, um, you would think by now some professionals would have um, mentioned that to us way, way earlier. And I, I've never had it mentioned. Never. Not once. So our repairman from Green Tractors is back here this morning uh, with the cylinder. Arnie hasn't seen that he's here yet, so I'll tell Arnie he's here, and we'll see uh, how he made out with the cylinder and what the damages are going to be. It's pretty bad when uh, the mechanic has to jump start your tractor. It was cold last night, but it's usually a sign that the battery's going to. So the thing. You, you need equipment on a farm, even a hobby farm, you're going to need some form of equipment and equipment is expensive to buy, um, expensive to maintain and you really should store it properly too so that it will, so that you can keep it as long as you can without requiring that maintenance and it uh, needing repairs. So everyone wants the equipment, but uh, these are things you have to consider. And as a startup, like I've mentioned in other videos, probably uh, purchasing used equipment, gently used, or even uh, old, really old equipment if it's been stored inside and stuff, you can get some good deals. But choose the things you absolutely need. And as you get more and more established, um, get... Uh, the extra stuff then because uh, hiring out for people to do your field work and stuff it's also extremely expensive and not only that um, they are very busy so they may not have time for you or they may not get to you in time your hay may get overly coarse because you're waiting for someone to cut and bale your hay um, winter might set in before you can get a combine to do your corn. So these are all considerations you need to make. So now we're checking on our disc. He thinks there's a problem with the airflow. So he's just checking that out. The airflow in the from the cylinder through the tubes, right? Sorry? I wasn't listening. I was looking at it working. Sorry? The airflow is from the cylinders through that tubing. Yeah, so when he when he disconnected that cylinder, he got air in the lines. So he's just gonna move it a couple times to get that air out. Okay. Because that air is but that but that wasn't the problem. The cylinder was no. the problem. I'll show you the problem. Fix? That's a that's a two-way cylinder. And and as I was operating that 
wheel was going down, so they think the fluid was uh, was flowing back on its own, so the uh, the seal wasn't correct. And so what did he do to fix it? So he, put, he repacked it, new seal. Okay, so he just put a seal on it, and that's all fixed. So it should be fixed. We'll it's find not it. going to be a huge bill, just labor and a little patch. Won't be twenty bucks. But it looks like we're going to get uh, now two new batteries for the tractor. So we'll show you what the bills on that cost, just so you have an idea that uh, well, once you get the equipment, that's not the end of it. You have to fill it with diesel, which we all know what's happening to diesel nowadays. And then you got to keep these uh, girls running. If you if you were a small farmer, it's totally impractical to have any machine. If you can get someone to do it for you, but the problem is to get someone to do it for you when you want it done been uh, moving or renovating our kitchen a little bit um, we had a really really small refrigerator so we fi finally decided to invest in a bigger one but it wouldn't fit so it meant tearing down all these cabinets and repositioning them and right now the refrigerator has just arrived so we're hoping that it makes it in the doorway the biggest problem was uh, that um, because of lambing and stuff like that, I'll often freeze a whole bunch of meals so that we can uh, just heat it up when we're super busy on the farm. And uh, we just didn't have enough freezer space. So we're hoping this one will give us a lot more room. So there it is, our new fridge. It's in, it fits in our space, so we measured it right, and it seems to be working. So that's good. Right now, Arnie's watching Men in Black 3. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're going to call that a day. We're going to get on with watching our movie here. And Arnie's just going to be an idiot. Anyway, thank, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now. Bye for now.